Hey everyone, welcome to the Drinks with Jess podcast. This is your host, Jess Brannis, and this is where we bring the LGBT community and its allies together to share in each other's missions and help each other grow. I hope everybody is staying calm, staying safe, and staying at home still because we are in mid-May, and uh, that's how we continue to roll, at least here in the southeastern part of Pennsylvania where I'm at, and I know in a lot of other places as well. But if you are new to listening to the show, you can go on to dwjphl.com for all of our social media links and links to our archive shows. You can also find information about this show and all the others on the Be The Voice podcast network at brandnessenterprises.com slash be hyphen the hyphen voice. And make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. You can find us everywhere, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, you name it, we are there. And I am so excited. Number one, I'm very excited because for those of you who are watching... Behind me is a huge three-foot piece of art, which I painted myself, and I am not a visual person. I usually can only draw stick figures, but during this time, I decided to pick up a new skill, and uh, I think it turned out pretty well. And I am also very fortunate to have the guest with us today, Jen Pearson, residential mortgage consultant and holistic health coach joining me and you my dear are the first guest while i have this new painting up in my office oh my god i'm so honored thank you for having me oh my god this is i mean seriously i could not think of how to spring anew in this situation than to create some freaking awesome artwork i have to say for a first try and to have you come on because you really do have such a knack for becoming self-aware. And I know this is something that you've practiced for a while. And for all of you out there, Jen and I met through Stephanie Chin, who most of you know, because she has been one of the most uh, celebrated guests on this show. So Jen is uh, a huge contact through her, who I just adore. So Jen, how are you feeling in these moments right now? Because we've been in this for about two months and you're in New Jersey, which has been pretty hard hit. Yes. I, we definitely got hit one of the hardest. Um, I know that I've been personally affected. My grandmother, I've been quarantined since March 13th. And during that time, my grandmother died. And then, um, my aunt has COVID. My uncle has COVID. My cousin has COVID. And then I probably hear about two dozen people, a week that either have it or, you know, there's somebody in their family died or it's really, it's really serious. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's definitely impacted us heavily here. Yeah. I mean, what I noticed, and I wasn't the only, I mean, I definitely went through it, um, but for others, and, and I'm sure you've seen it too, where at the beginning of this whole quarantine shutdown, stay at home situation, first people were going through their closets and all of a sudden posting all this great stuff that they found or pictures or memories. And then it started to change into like home cooking and home improvement stuff. But, you know, I think it came to a point, at least for me, where I've just become accustomed to it because I'm so used to being at home anyway. I mean, granted, I miss going out like a mofo. I, me not being able to be social (laughs) is extremely difficult but how did you see yourself transitioning because i know that you mentioned to me earlier that you've you've really accepted the moment for for what it is and and you're still just moving on yeah i think for me um i had to accept the reality very quickly because i'm a high risk asthmatic um so there really wasn't flexibility with my health there was, so there was no gray i knew that i had to stay inside mm-hmm. just to kind of see how things progress so from the very beginning i just had in my mind so from the beginning when i first quarantined march 13th i just thought i'm not going to get out of here until july so i thought you know because i con- contacted my my doctors they showed me a graph of when they thought it was going to be um, the highest level, and they said whenever they say for you to you're able to come out, you got to add a month because of my life. So again, in my mind, I had July. So there was an ex- 
acceptance from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have this resistance in myself, like, oh, my gosh, I really, you know, I can't wait to get out. I wasn't clawing at the door. You know, I was like, made, I made peace with it. And that really helped my mind. And then the other thing is that, and I was telling you earlier, for me, I had to limit what I consumed mm-hmm. in terms of the, the media. Mm-hmm. There was so much information coming at different angles, and um, I just needed to control what I can control, control the controllable. So that coupled with maintaining my normal schedule, mm-hmm. I literally wake up at the same time every single day that I always have. I have the same um, priming techniques. I do meditation, breathing techniques through Wim Hof. Um, I have a, a journal. I have a normal routine. Eat the same food, so it gives me some sort of stability and normalcy mm-hmm. in a very unprecedented time. Yeah. So now, I, you you yeah. have a you have a cat, right? Because everybody knows I have Mr. Nacho, but you have a cat, right? Yeah, my precious little quarantine buddy. Thank God for her. Now, yeah. has has have you noticed a a difference in her attitude, or has she pretty much stayed pretty calm? Because I could tell you, Nacho, his temperament, or his, I guess, emotional status or mental status really changed a lot. I mean, he was a little bit more depressed, a little bit more confused, a little bit more up my ass. I mean, have you noticed that with your pet? You know what? I haven't. My um, Ari's a, like a little love bug, so she's still following me around, and you know, yeah, she's been the same. Um, I talk to her a lot more. <laughs> we have full reciprocal conversations now, and I think I read her mind. But other than that, no, it's she's still the same, and uh, and I haven't noticed that much of a difference. She probably reads yours. Like I, I look at Nacho sometimes, and I always wish he could talk like a human. But yeah. then again, the way he looks at me, I'm afraid of what he'll say. <laughs> like, he's probably calling me an idiot. Probably about oh eight God. times a day and probably about 20 times a day saying, please stop hugging me. Oh, yeah. Forget it. I'm, I'm constantly hugging her and patting her. She's probably, like, she looks at me like, all right, lady, get, get away from me. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 But that, I mean, but people have been had, have been noticing this with their with their pets as well, I guess, when they're not used to being at home, and you and I are so used to being at home, but even with that, like, for example, I I do what you do, like, I have my routine, and I try and stay in it, although I did falter for a while, just trying to get used to everything, but I try and, and stay on my routine, but for some reason, now the routine has equaled into extra fetch time when I'm trying to work in my office. Or if I take a break and sit on the couch for a second and turn on the news, again, it turns into fetch time. And not by my own choice, but by his. And I just noticed a more of a sense of, I guess, I don't know if it was like just confusion or fear, but I'm aware that pets do tend to follow whatever emotions that they're, you know, parents are feeling. I like to call them parents what their parents are feeling. So I figured that maybe that was something that your cat went through, but I'm glad she did not. And I'm glad that you became accepting of this early on because I think it's been very, very hard for people to do that because, for example, I'm somebody who constantly talks to myself. I'm used to that. I figured I'd get all the right answers, but there are other people who are starting to bring up things in their in their minds and yeah. I, because they have the time to. And... You and I had talked before about neurolinguistic programming because mm-hmm. I'm a language geek and it's something that you've studied intensively. So did you notice anything going through your head that had to kind of be quieted down like most people at this point because there's so much fear and despair and financial stress and so many questions being unanswered? Did you happen to go through that yourself? Absolutely. Yeah, so in the very beginning, I started using the same words like lockdown and quarantine, and I actually was referring to myself as a zoo animal because my friends and family were visiting me through the window. Um, So I caught myself probably a couple weeks into it where I was like, well, words have power. And then again, my study of neuro-linguistic programming it's the 
words that you're using are shaping your reality. Mm-hmm. So I quickly decided that I was going to call it something else. Mm-hmm. So I decided for me, um, what was working with spiritual awakening, that it was um, I was being spiritually blessed, or that it was a once in a lifetime opportunity for global healing. I started saying things like that. And when I started saying things like that, it started to call me. And then I also started to appreciate the stillness, the quiet. And I, you know, I set up my house almost to be like a temple, like a Zen temple, because it was calling me. So I put incense out and candles all over my house and um, just peaceful music. And I just kind of went into this surrender mode where I just said, no matter what, no matter what, I know that I'm going to be okay. Um, I have support system. I have been trained to, you know, be a leader for 20 years. I have skill sets, and now it's time to roll up my sleeves, break out old notebooks, refer back to my journals, and remind myself of what I already know. Mm-hmm. And really tapping into the community that I've been creating for so long and the resources that I have. And that has made a big difference for me. Mm-hmm. And that, again, a lot of NLP and neurolinguistic programming is about modeling. So finding people or um, circumstances that are really more empowering and then doing what they're doing. Right. And so I decided I was going to find people that were staying connected and positive and were a good resource. And then I also wanted to be that to other people. Right. So, like, when we're talking about, uh, for those of you uh, out there who don't uh, know what neurolinguistical programming is, it's really talking to yourself in a different way, if we can put it in a simplistic form. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, some people refer to positive affirmations when they're trying to build confidence, but really changing the wording that you use, because it's all based on sometimes perspective. You know, how you look at things, how you view things, wh- how you identify it via word. If you can change that, sometimes it makes it, like you said, lockdown sounds really harsh. You know, mm-hmm. and if you could change that around to where it's a more acceptable term and a healthier term, so that way you can relate some kind of positive to it, that can become your norm. Like I know not- when they yeah. said lockdown, first of all, I felt like I was going to be in prison. And especially when they announced it here on the day before St. Patrick's Day, I thought I was going to die. Yep. You know, like, right before St. Patrick's Day. Like, could you please at least let us get through those two days and have a good time before it's all over? Like, not even a last supper. You don't have anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? (laughs) Well, yeah, but that's exactly it, too. When you say the word lockdown, all all of a sudden we all have an innate response and we have an association to what that means. We go to prison, right? So we go to like cage. We're you know against our will. Where we have all these things that flood our mind with that association of that word. So again, we could use a, a different phrase to describe the same experience, but. We will have a different reality. We'll have a different interpretation of it. Mm-hmm. That that I mean, I I had to go through that. I'm like, okay, this isn't a lockdown because it was mm-hmm. it was very hard for me. No, I mean, I it's also hard for me to change the thought, and I'm sure many other people are like this. I don't mind being at home. I have so much to do here, and I'm happy with my fire pit and my grill and my dog and my backyard. I'm yep. happy with that. However, when it's forced upon me. I don't like that. And I think that's where a lot of people come from because I could tell you right now, for those of you who are listening, for all of you who say you want to get back to work and I know there's financial stress and everything, you know damn well that when you're at work, you just want a vacation. You know what I mean? Like people actually don't love work that much to want to hurry back. They want to hurry back because of the financial stuff. I know people who started running and now run like marathon lengths of miles just because their kids are at home all the time. They didn't want to run before, <laughs> you know? So, I, you know, I, I do know that this has caused a lot of stress for, for everybody involved, but we are making our way through it. And, Jen, I want you to stick with me because we are going to take a break. 
and we have a lot more to discuss, but for the rest of you, we will be right back with more Drinks with Jess. Stay tuned. The Drinks with Jess is making a big splash. It's time to join forces and step outside of our comfort zones. There is strength in union. It's time for people to tell their stories and make a difference. That is what we aim to do. The Drinks with Jess podcast is where we bring the LGBT community and its allies together to share each other's missions and help each other grow. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Bringing you amazing guests that cover a wide variety of topics and are inclusive to all cultures and communities. Join us on this amazing journey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Drinks with Jess podcast. Again, this is your host, Jess Brannis, and this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share each other's missions and help each other grow. And sticking with me is the wonderful and amazing Jen Pearson, who has been enlightening mm-hmm. me in this conversation. And, you know, I think that this is a time, and this is what I love about you, Jen. When I spoke to you the first time, and even, you know, as we talked the past couple of days before we got set up for this actual show, you know, you have such a a great frame of mind. And when this whole thing started, after about a week, I really thought to myself that there were a couple of things that happened. Number one, there was some good that came out of this. If you think about it, we're having less and less pollution. I think they just reported on CNN that our pollution is going to roll back to almost pre-World War II times. Even though mm-hmm. it may be temporary, that's a wonderful thing. I mean, you see animals everywhere. The sky hasn't looked bluer. You see people congregating with their families more because parents are now over not overloaded with work, so they're at home. They're spending time with their kids, and obviously having kids in the house at all times is not easy just ask any teacher out there because if you have two children think about having 30 in a classroom at a time because that's what i did for 17 years it's not easy for eight hours a day so now they have their kids but like i remember looking out my window and all of a sudden i saw like kids with their parents walking the dog or going to the park or going on a hike and you started to see these conversations and this joy open up that you haven't seen probably since i was a kid you know i feel like things have kind of rolled back in certain ways to Mm -hmm. like I had such a a great childhood like great memories because it was different now you have two parent families what what, that both have jobs or maybe two or three jobs and there isn't that time that we used to have so I do see good stuff coming out of this but I also looked at it as for those people who have always had a either a passion project or didn't like their job or wanted to do something more or had this desire or this dream to you know want to be an entrepreneur or take some classes to change careers like this was giving you time to do it you know and i i think that people were so caught up in the despair that they didn't see that part of it and maybe now they're starting to see it completely uh, i i couldn't agree with you more so for me um I obviously remember 9-11. We were all impacted, especially in this area. But for me, what happened was after 9-11, there was like a change in everyone for years after that. But people were like, there was a community support and people, it didn't matter if you were the business person, you were conducting traffic. It was like everybody stepped in and kind of helped each other. And that lasted for a long time as this like eerie to real reality change. And then it kind of disappeared. But this kind of reminds me of that time where it was like community supporting each other and, you know, people rallying to be there for, for one another. I know that I have had, um, because I have not left, and my, my friends have been doing all the grocery shopping for me and, and leaving it outside for me, and people have been so kind and, you know, leaving me bottles of wine outside my door. or just But the, the kindness has been so incredible. And, um, yeah, it's an opportunity for people to start um, really, I think a lot of times what happens when you're in a crisis mode is that, the things that matter go to the surface, and the things that don't fall away. Right. And and there also is, you know, maybe potential issues that you've been avoiding. Maybe, you, you know, you're looking at your husband now and saying, who are you, or your wife, or, 
whatever the case may be, or you're like, wow, I didn't realize my children were, you know, into that, or, and people are um, discovering new hobbies. It's so surreal as I'm looking out the window, seeing all these people on bikes. They're not on their phones. I'm seeing people going for walks, and it's just, um, it's beautiful to see. It's almost, like you were saying, like back to my childhood, mm-hmm. when things were, were more simple. Eating dinner together, cooking, sharing a meal, having conversations. But it also is a time for innovation. Mm-hmm. Um, now the moment where people are starting to collaborate and say, okay, we've got a problem to solve here. Or now businesses are discovering that, you know, maybe we can go remotely mm-hmm. and still be even more productive. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and also we're social creatures. Like you were talking about before, you, you like to go out, you like to socialize. I do too. I, I'm probably almost equally an introvert as I am an extrovert, mm-hmm. but I, I have been finding ways, creative ways to um, stay connected to my friends. I'm doing Zoom calls like everybody, I'm doing online virtual uh Workout classes, and I have a, you know just groups of people that meet at different times. I'm still doing my leadership training classes. I'm still doing my networking with realtors and all different people, but it's just in a different way. So mm-hmm. it's allowing us to be you know adaptable, and um, you know and, and there's always a blessing or a silver lining in it if we choose to see it. Yeah, I I, I do think that hopefully there are people out there who were so afraid to take the jump before into creating whatever they wanted to create for the future and and start tackling it. But at the same time, mm-hmm. like, there are things that obviously we miss, and it's so wonderful to see all this stuff, but, like, I mentioned to you the other day, like, I miss hugging my friends and my family. You know, oh, yeah. my, my parents came up. They came right through my back fence into my backyard. We all had masks <laughs> on. I was at one end of the yard. They were at the other end of the yard. It was so wonderful to see them, but not to be able to hug them was really, really difficult because we're just such a close family. Sure. And now you have other situations that obviously are not necessarily on the positive side, but for example, here in in my county, especially in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of opi- opioid addiction or you know, mm-hmm. as as you mentioned to me earlier, the, the suicide rates have gone up, uh, domestic abuse rates have gone up because people are mm-hmm. in homes and don't have either the outlet or the means to get what they think they need or, mm-hmm. you know, or in a hostile situation that they can't leave at this point because you can't go anywhere. So how do people combat this type of situation and how can they turn it into a, okay, this is what I'm going to need to refocus on. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and then also alcohol uh, consumption has gone up, I think, 235% since we started. Mine um, didn't because the liquor stores were closed and you couldn't get there online. Oh, that's right, in, in Pennsylvania, right? Oh, All the liquor stores were closed. Right. Yeah, I heard that. They closed on St. Patrick's Day. Again. Oh, my gosh, yeah. That was... Yes, they closed on St. Patrick's Day, and then I realized two weeks ago that it was Cinco de Mayo. That's like my favorite mm-hmm. holiday besides this past weekend, <laughs> which would have been the first pride of the season. And sure. obviously, I was supposed to be out for the whole weekend causing trouble and being inappropriate, and now I had to be <laughs> home, and there's nobody to be inappropriate with. I was, I'm yeah. having a problem with that. <laughs> You're hilarious. Yeah, I'm sure you'll you'll find a way. I I will make up for it. Don't you worry. But we'll, no, how, we, we will all make up for that. Yes, yes, but how how can people kind of reframe themselves? Like, what is it important for them to to at least try and do day by day to get them through this situation? I mean, for me, um, it's a focus on my health. So I I have not been drinking while I'm in here because um, alcohol is a depressant. And we don't need anything to make us more depressed than what we could potentially see. <laughs> we don't need any more depression or anxiety. So um, I'm choosing not to do that while I'm in here. Um, don't get me wrong. I can't wait to be able to have a cocktail If I with send friends. you a bottle of wine, you're telling me you would not drink it. If I send well, you a bottle hey, of wine, <laughs> courtesy of the Drinks With Just podcast, you would not lay into that. No, I mean, I... Uh, I shouldn't say I'm a hundred percent, but um, you know, because people have dropped off wine at my house, um, and I, but I probably have had maybe three bottles since March 
13. Um, yeah, I mean, I really, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really touching it, and I, I, I'm consciously doing that because I'm focused on my health. My own mentality is that I want to come out of this mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially stronger. I want to have better relationships. I want to have a better body. I want to be even more skilled than I was coming in. And for me, what that means is, you know, again, like I was emphasizing before, having a morning routine and ritual and then also having a nighttime ritual. It gives me a sense of certainty and chaos. So uh, I'll just, like, run you through my morning priming. I wake up at 5 o'clock every single day, seven days a week. I 5 do. o'clock? Five o'clock in the morning, I know. See, I, yeah. you know what? It, if you ever need to add a phone call to your morning routine, just call me because <laughs> I'm usually up at three. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I'm a nut. Oh, well, that's good. I now I have a 5 a.m. study. Yeah. There um, you go. But I, I'm like, um, you know, I, I wake up, well, first of all, I wake up with a, a very sweet paw on my feet. She's my alarm clock, five o'clock every morning without fail. She comes over to me and she lovingly paws my face at five. Now by five fifteen, if I'm not up, she just stops me. So, so she and then she escorts me to her food bowl. Um, so she's the one that wakes me up, which makes me laugh every single morning. Um, so I just I wake up, I go into a meditation right away, and that really saves my mind. Um, because when you can't go outside, going inside has been a lightsaber because I can quiet my mind. I can live in a stillness. I can see the things that are arising within me. I, you know, if there are things I need to address or patterns that I'm witnessing, all those things come up during meditation. And then after I meditate, then I journal. Then I'll do journaling. I'm on Teddy's journals right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and that helps. Then I take my vitamins. So I, um, I have access to a supplement line that's the closest to IV therapy that you could get. Um, it's, um, isotonic, mm-hmm. meaning it has the same osmolarity or pressure as your tears, and it goes straight into your small intestines. Um, so you get about a 95% absorption rate. So I'm doing, um, you know, immunity, vitamin C, vitamin D, multivitamins with iron, all the things that we need um, to supplement these days. Mm-hmm. So I, I, do, I do that. Um, yeah, just it's all these little t- techniques that I have developed along the way um, that really keep my mind sharp. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, take, I'm taking a master class. I don't know if you've heard of master class, but... Um, it's amazing. It's like this online course that you can take and you get access to the uh, best thought leaders in whatever category. So, for example, last night I was being taught how to cook through by Gordon Ramsay. And then mm-hmm. there's, you know, yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson for science. And Natalie Portman is teaching me acting. And so I'm just immersing myself in learning and growing and just focus on my, my spirituality and my friendship, my body, working out, staying healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the things that I know that will serve me as I come out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so, and then those are the things that really work for me. And people are always like, I need so happy. Um, because I, and it's a choice. Right. It, it's, a, it's a choice. It's, it's a conscious choice. And that's, a, that's not to say that every day, like there aren't days that I don't feel off. I mean, yesterday I had an off day, and um, I, I did. My mind was racing. Um, there are so many challenges in the real estate world, and if you can imagine not being able to do their institutions of employment. I've had clients that were on solo. I can't close their loans now. You know, the clerk's offices are closed. Getting title work is a little harder to do. Like, there's so many more complications to an already complicated process. Um, and, you know, just, you know, the purchase market is closed. If, if you can't do open houses and all that stuff, you know, how, how are you supposed to sell a house? So, um, so there are definitely challenges, but I'm not choosing to focus on that. Mm-hmm. Because as, as the saying goes, where focus goes, energy flows. So, again, that's back to the things I'm telling myself. Instead of focusing on what I don't have, I'm focused on what I do have and what I can get even better at and where I want to go. And I've been constantly referring to my 
I do a vision board every December. Oh, I love vision boards. Yeah, yeah, and it's really, like, I went back to my vision board in December um, of 2019 of what I wanted my 2020 to be. And I am hyper-focusing on that. I'm I'm looking at it right now. I'm in my meditation room. I have to Um, make a new one because I tend to make them on my computer, but then I never print them out. Okay, yeah. But but I need different ones in different rooms because, like, for example, I have a home gym that I built in my basement mm -hmm. because I'm a huge workout freak. But I'm missing my Rocky poster, and I don't feel any motivation to go down there and run my ass on the treadmill or lift weights, even though I still do it every day. I I yeah. need I need my inspiration. I need my office. I need all my shows and my network posters and all that stuff up here and where it's going because I haven't done that either. I've been reforming the house and need my vision board. I need it. No, it, it really helps. I mean. I mean, if anybody came into my house right now, they'd think I was insane job because I've got, I've got, like, journals all over the house. I've got, like, post-its on my, my mirror in my bathroom, on my refrigerator, like, because I need constant reminders right now. It's, like, things to snap you out of, rea- like, the reality of what's going on and not stay stuck in that chaos or in that sense of despair. I need to constantly remind myself of who I am, what I know. And again, surround myself by people that are constantly reminding me of that and um, and utilizing the support systems that I already have in place. But again, all these little things, these reminders will be like, oh, okay, I've got this. Or I'm, I'm not focused on just the next, you know, um, few months. My vision was really for the next five years. And I can still just I can still chart that, and I can still have that as my my goal and my trajectory of where I want to take my life. That doesn't change. Mm -hmm. I still have things that I want to accomplish. I still want to write a book. I still have those things, and I can maybe focus more on those things now. And, you know, maybe maybe some of the things that I would have thought I would have been more of a priority, maybe that's taking a back seat now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm kind of um, Mm re-prioritizing. I love that. I, I think that's so important. I, I hope that people are taking the time. I know many are getting very excited because things are reopening. I don't want people to go out and rush that. It's like I prepared for this at the beginning of February because my father's a doctor, and he warned me in February. He said this is not oh. going to be good. So everybody, when I would go out to the bars, I would go out and I'd have gloves on and I'd have Clorox wipes and I'd wipe down everything, and people were making fun of me. I said, you just wait. Exactly really? one month later, everything was shut down. And now when I run into those people, I said, see, so when they they, they say, okay, we're, we're opened up. My dad already told me, he said, give it an extra three weeks. Cause when things open up three weeks later, they'll have new cases. So I am slowing my role a little bit and taking advantage of the time. But Jen, you are such a delight. I love that you joined me today because I have been waiting for this. And I remember our first conversation, I said, you need to come on the show. Mm-hmm. And it, no, you probably were not, you were probably not even expecting it, but now here you are, and I think it's perfect. So, where can everybody find you? Number one, if they have questions about, you know, setting schedules, doing, uh, you know, kind of yeah. weaving their way through this, and if they're looking for a house because you are in real estate. Yeah, I mean, I would be happy to help anyone that I can. Um, my, I'll give them my email. So it's Pearson, P E A R S O N. Dot Jen, J E N N one four three at gmail dot com. So it's my last name dot Jen with two Ns one four three at gmail dot com. They could ask me anything that they'd like. Um, I'd be happy to you know, support anybody. And I'm also um, very active on Facebook. Um, Jen Pearson, friend request me. I'd be happy to connect with you on there as well. Oh. Fantastic. And for all of you that are watching, you see that information pop up on the screen. And for those of you who are listening, just check the show notes and all that information will be there. But I am I, I am forever grateful that you decided to join me because I think this opened up a very important conversation for everybody. And for the rest of you out there, don't forget to go on to DWJPHL.com again to connect with us because we love to connect with you. And I hope, again, everybody stays calm, stays home, and stays safe because that's what we need from everybody at this moment but at the same time i want everybody to reflect and enjoy themselves while you have the time jen thank you again so much for the rest of you out there thank you
Have a good night.